I became a writer. Um, I moved to LA and sort of about once every year I would kind of go to my agents and I would say, hey, um, there's this movie I really want to write about this, um, you know, this gay English mathematician in the 1940s and he commits suicide. Um, and they would say, that is the worst idea for a movie we've ever heard. No one will ever finance that. No one will ever make that. Please don't write that. You will never understand the importance of what I am creating here. Now, have you worked with Benedict Cumberbatch before? No, this film was the first time. And how did he come to the project? Um, you know, he had, early on, he read the script and he, he raised his hand right away. I mean, he was, from right when we finished the script, he was one of the first people to read it and raise his hand and say, I will do anything to be a part of this movie, I will, I will clear my schedule, just, I, you know, he knew the story of Alan Turing before, um, so he was um, really excited about, about doing it. He, um, you know, he felt like we did, that this was an important story, a story that we all wanted to tell, um, a story that needed to be told. And, and so he sort of dove in and kept raising his hand saying, tell me when you're going to do it, like, I'll be there. Um, and it was wonderful. And, and we were so lucky because all of the cast are the same. Kira was the same way. I mean, she had known the Turing story and she, she called us and said, when are you guys doing it? Because I'll, I'll move everything else. Like, I, I need to be a part of an Alan Turing movie. Um, and it's been so great to see um, my sort of love of Alan Turing kind of uh, be shared by all these wonderful actors and filmmakers. Now, when you were on the set with the director, mm -hmm. yep. working directly with him, and I understand that you were writing as you were shooting? Yeah, you know, I think we were sort of, oh, you're always making little tweaks and things. I mean, the script was pretty set. In the six months that, that Morton, the director, and I were working on it, um, you know, we would, we, the cast hadn't come in yet, so it was just me and Morton, so we would act out all the scenes ourselves. Um, so it was like, I would play Kira's part, and Morton would play Benedict's, and we would like do all of the like tender emotional scenes between the two of us, and I cannot tell you how glad I am right now that there is no photo or video record of any of this happening, because <laughs> God, that would be embarrassing. You're going to need all the help you can get, and they are not going to help you if they do not like you. I understood he stammered that he had trouble talking and relating to other people. We really wanted a film that sort of showed that repression, and showed how someone should have someone who is on the sort of the outskirts of society, should have someone who is different than the people around him, was precisely because of that difference able to accomplish things that, that no one else ever thought were possible. What about his humor? He had some sense of humor, didn't he? Um, yeah, Alan Turing was a funny guy. Um, and that's something that was really important to, I think, to all of us. And Morton and I, you know, when we first started working on the project, it was incredibly important that the movie have humor to it and have lightness to it. Because Alan Turing's life had humor to it and it had lightness to it. We did not want to make a dour film. Um, I think that Alan Turing's legacy would not have been served by a dour film. We wanted to make a lively, engaging film because Turing was lively and engaging. And his sort of difficulty kind of talking to people and fitting in with people um, uh, was so, it was, this, it was this tremendous part of who he was. You know, there's a scene in the movie where um, uh, Alan Turing, as played by Benedict, sort of tries to tell a joke and it goes tremendously wrong. And that was, I think, one of our favorite moments because it was like, you can kind of laugh with Turing and even though he can be a difficult character sometimes, you, you realize this sort of fragile warmth at the center of him. Well, we know you as a computer uh, enthusiast as a uh, young boy. Sure, yes, you knew me, now, you knew me when. Yes, and now you turn to writing. Tell me about The Devil in the White City. Sure, um, The Devil in the White City is a book by Eric Larson um, about the Chicago World's Fair of 1893. Um, I had the privilege last year of getting to adapt it as a screenplay for Warner Brothers. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio is attached to play um, the serial killer um, in the book, um, and he's been really enthusiastic, and so we're we're hopefully going to get to make it soon. It's one of my favorite books. Um, getting to work with Eric Larson uh, on the script was just a tremendous honor. Um, and he's such a genius. Um, so it is, unlike The Imitation Game, it is a tremendously expensive film. So um, a lot of uh, smart number crunchers need to do a lot of smart number crunching before we can quite make it, but, but hopefully we'll get to do it soon.